This is the Crude Effect Podcast. With Alan Lee and Shobi Nati. Oh, yeah! We're going to talk about the new masculinity issue from GQ. Um, Pharrell is on the cover. Uh, take a look at the picture. Um, basically, it's an interview um, about Pharrell and I don't want to say his definition, but kind of his views on masculinity, how he sees it um, evolving in his, in his eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, not even just masculinity, but uh, even gender. Um, he talks about why he started seeing things this way, how he started th- seeing things this way. Um, one of the things that I saw in the article, and I, I advise you read it, uh, it, it's an insightful article. Um, he talks about how the song Blurred Lines with him and Robin Thicke. Um, and that song and how it was, um, some of the lyrics were misogynistic. It was during the really the early stages of the Me Too movement. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, they were being sued by Marvin Gaye's estate you know, for the, um, for the uh, background, uh, for the music, for the um, copyrights. And so he was going through a lawsuit with that and at the same time kind of hearing the negative connotations from the song. You know, I know you want it, blurred lines. Right, um, right. That was when Kazi was um, still, you know, going through his case. Right. And so, you know, the reason why you and this, I wanted to speak about it is, um, is there such a thing as a new masculinity? Is there such a thing as a, uh, where Pharrell was talking about, and even us, uh, you know, some of the younger generations, the Gen Xers, talk about, is it a genderless society? Um, and how do we, how do we adjust to those that see it differently without it being confrontational? Yeah, chomp I mean, on it. <laughs> this, this is an area that the crude effect we pride ourselves off tapping into. We're both universal thoughts, but we're also guys who look at things from a, a just a common perspective. And this, this. This genderless society, I don't, I can't see how this this works. It doesn't make sense because man is man, woman is woman, and I know this is, this line will be blurred and taken out of context or whatever. But as much as we mix and try to change certain things in our lives and the way we carry ourselves, or even the way we just approach situations, there are always boundaries. Now, I don't judge anyone. I don't know why people do what they do. Why I do what I do sometimes, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a choice. Who am I to tell you how to think in your mind? But as a society, how do we adjust to that? Because there are going to be some who do think like that, and there are going to be some who who think like you, you know, for instance. And I had to um, be open with it. I'm just boundary-oriented. I've always been that guy. Well, yeah, and I had to be taught. I mean, because I I grew up, I mean, we grew up in a society where, you know, homosexuals had, you know, had to stay in the closet. Um, You know, it was, um, what was it called back then? Um... Not transgender. There's a lot of but, different things. Yeah, but what was it called back then when you were um, cross-dressing and all that other stuff? I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, there's always been different terms. Mm-hmm. And, you know, now we're, ge- we're getting terms where people are getting more comfortable. Transgender, LGBTQ2T, right. T, um, all of right. that. We're getting, we're getting more comfortable in allowing people to identify. And that's something that my daughter um, helped me with. Um, identi- identify. It's, you can identify with whatever you want. Exactly. That's fine. True. You totally can't. And that's where we have to say, hey, okay, if you identify that's totally fine, I, who am I to say? But as far as what you are, as for what you're born, that to me is pretty, you know, A and B. You have the right to identify with whatever yeah. you want. And I think I, and I had to be open to that. Like I said, I grew up in an era, me too. you know, where, where too. gays and cross dressers and all that, they were shunned. Right. I think that's what happened with Bruce Jenner. You know, he talked about that. Yeah. You know, um, his, his ex wife even talked about that. Yeah. Um, he's comfortable, obviously, being who he is now. Yep. You, you see the freedom, you know, in the way that, you know, um, I forgot what her name is. Uh, what, uh, Caitlin. Caitlyn Jenner. I can't call him Bruce, but Caitlyn. Um, <laughs> no more Bruce. Yeah, All Bruce right, is gone. But um, yeah, and I, and I see the you know the comfort level in which she's living, and so no, you have every right to identify. But at the end of the day, Bruce was born Bruce. This genderless society that doesn't even make sense to me. I, I agree. It just have, I think, like I said, you have you to have to have boundaries. With yes, yes, I agree. You can't just certain be like, things I'm in life are core I, black yeah, and white. Well, and you know what? And speaking of right. speaking of, um, I think uh, J- Janelle Monae or whatever, well, the, yeah, the singer, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. talking about you know, um, I identify. I don't say gender, but as far as like her sexuality, mm-hmm. as like I don't have a, a sex. Like you know, I love all, you know, which is fine, but. And like I said, that's something that you can identify with. That's not a gender thing. Maybe she's coming from her the sex, aspect that she sex. likes men, she and likes women. women, she likes it all. Right. And so that's so, right. so and so that's where you know, and I and I think that's where we have to have, be willing to have that conversation. And once again, thank you, Nia Lee, love you. Her, there's a difference between sexuality, right, gender, right, 
what you identify right. as. Right. See, the old schoolers, they are just like, hey, it's gender. It's this, that, the other. And, and we have to open the conversation up to, yes, there's gender. Well, there's a fear of having this conversation with those who are just straight black and white. Right, absolutely. They don't want right. to tackle this conversation. And, and if, but because if I, this, I mean... If I hadn't tackled it, I wouldn't be open minded. I agree. And I even agree. and even if they don't open their mind, at least they can't say that they don't get an opportunity to understand the younger generation. When I talk to a lot of my conservative friends, that's where they feel like liberalism and feminism goes too far. Is There's there a balance some, with everything, right? In and, life, and, 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 I, and this I, is what yeah. this conversation we're talking about with Pharrell. I don't see any balance. I, as far you, as as far as what he's saying, yeah, a genderless society, right? Where's the balance? I think he's going through a transformation because he talks ah, about yeah. that's what it sounds. Yeah, like. he talks about how he wouldn't have um, written a lot of the songs that he wrote, things of that nature. And I and I and um, you know, and I've looked at some of the comments after the article, um, and a lot of especially the I don't want to say the women, but you know, the real fans of his, mm-hmm. um. They really were like, look, you know, you have to take in an effect of look at where you were. You were a young man. That's how men are pretty much raised, you know. Right. You know, I don't want to say misogynistic, but right. very like, hey, you got to get your women, got to right. get your money, right. you know, all that. So he was a young man, and then he grew out of that. And so they were saying, like, every artist evolves. So you're going through an evolution. It's okay. Don't right. look at your old work as garbage look at it as like okay that was the beginning and did exactly. i ever evolve exactly and so that's what they were trying to say to him and i think that's where his conversation and others conversations can can grow too because when you talk to the new schoolers and say hey you know he's an old fart of this that the other's like no you know maybe they just need to evolve let's try and help them evolve or i or we can also look at at it from this angle where maybe when he was young maybe he felt pressure to go a certain way for an extended period of time yeah. in his career, and now he feels liberated that he doesn't. Maybe he had inklings of. I get the of, sense of, it was growth. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. You, you, you understand I what this. I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you why I say I. Because if it's, he it's, came it's, out that I don't say demonstrative, but that aggressive about it, right? It seems I'm getting the sense that he was holding this in for a while. You look at his music early with the clips, um, nerd. A lot of his early work when he was working with Jay Z, and I mean, just look at the videos. Very hood, very misogynistic, very, hey, get our money, get our women. And then you see eventually when he came out with the second nerd album uh-huh. and he started working, you know, with a bunch of different artists, how he kind of started evolving as yes, an artist. Yes, growth. The controlled atmosphere. We have a lot of freedoms in this country, but we also have a dictatorship. A lot of people are not, maybe not aware of. Because all oh, free countries, no, it's still some tactics that have pushed the way we think in this country. A lot of us African Americans are trying to break away from that. From and you're seeing us being being more vocal about how we see things like we can't even express ourselves the way we want to a lot of times because we've been doing it the certain way this country has always taught us to do it. And white Americans who may have a lineage of uh lawyers or doctors in their in their bloodline. Right, we and we'll that. see a couple of those kids in that family who you were forced yeah, yeah, to go to that the route. Family business, yeah, yeah, just because. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're seeing a more broader view of living, thinking, all of that. Yeah, so. growing and, and being yeah. open minded. And so yeah. that's and that's where I would individuality say, is getting stronger. Yeah. And that's why I say the progressives and the liberals have that, but but at the same time there has to be a limit because you Definitely. still you boundaries still are everything. I don't care what no one yeah, say. You have, have to have boundaries yeah. with anything. Can't go in life. too far. Can't go too far. Everything's have meant to, to go at a, at a certain pace. So like I said, I, I thought it was a real interesting article. I thought it was something to really talk about because this is the direction that we're going in now and we have to be you know at the forefront especially us as you know as african-american and especially as men we have to be at the forefront of these conversations not be so rigid you know not to you know veer off too far but a lot of it does come from the church that limited thinking at time from religion not just the church you know from you know whatever religion it's it's a limit hey you're this that the other it's very rigid and even you know the the, our religions have had to be more open to the way that people are thinking as far as you know, if they want to get them in to conversate with Well, them. this is why for so long, because of this mentality that you're now speaking of, the Catholic Church with these priests, not talking about not, yeah. a lot of these priests in this Catholic yeah. Church, they should not be priests. Yeah. They and just now, should. And now, and they, it, now they're talking about they're going to let them uh, be able to marry now. What, priests? Yeah. 
I, I, what's wrong with that? I, nothing, but that's that's <laughs> that's it's not that I don't get. It. I get this the the celibacy and you know giving but yourself to God. Not, but, I understand, but that's but not it, for everyone. everyone. No, <laughs> and you're forcing no. it on people. And this is what the 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 issue sparks is these kinds of conversations. Exactly. You know about religion, about masculinity, about identity, about gender, and so that's why I thought it was such an interesting article. I challenge everybody to yes. read it and don't. Just read it because it's for real, but read it, be open minded about not just his thinking, because he comes from a little older thinking than normal. True. And then the fact that he's open minded, obviously yes. he's in Hollywood and that influences a little more. Yes. But be willing to hear his thoughts and all that because I'm gonna tell you, it kind of reminds me of, and you know, we'll end on it, it kind of reminds me of probably how Prince used to think. Possible. That's Hearing just, the stories and, yeah. and even with Morris Day, he just had an interview with, uh, talking, I think it was D.L. Hughley, on this show mm-hmm. about his relationship with Prince. And I wasn't always cool. cool. It doesn't. He, he spoke about similar things that we're talking about, about why Prince is such an introvert. A lot of times he didn't talk to the media, yep. things of that nature. Um, this he could didn't have, want to be judged, but yeah. for his sexuality, his, yeah. 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 his yeah. clothing and all that. I believe that. he was bisexual also. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You said... <laughs> 